Though we have a lot of room to grow and a lot of um, areas that I think that Fort Worth is behind and can um, grow in, um, I think now's a really good time. And quite frankly, I don't know that the iron will always be as hot as it is right now. I still think that there's a lot of upside uh, to being in Fort Worth in this moment, particularly in the, in the, in the entrepreneurial space. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and on this episode, we feature that rare breed of innovator, the serial entrepreneur. Most of our guests are focused in one area. They're either biotech founders, tech entrepreneurs, or social innovators. But on today's show, our guest has moved easily between multiple different industries in Fort Worth and beyond. Joining me today is Jonathan Morris, founder and owner of the Fort Worth Barbershop, the hotelier behind a new boutique hotel coming to Fort Worth, and host of Self-Employed, a new show on the Magnolia Network, which is Chip and Joanna Gaines' television network. It's not an exaggeration to say that Jonathan is single-handedly changing the perception of Fort Worth at home and abroad. Jonathan, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Thank you, Cam. Appreciate it. So let's start at the beginning. Tell me about your life growing up and how it led to you becoming a serial entrepreneur. Wow, okay, so uh, my my entrepreneurship journey, right, started uh, around the fourth grade. Um, in the fourth grade, I, I got it in my head to start selling bookmarks, right? So um, what I would do is I would go home, and when I say bookmarks, what you're thinking of as a bookmark it probably wasn't exactly that, right? So I would take computer paper and I would use this word processor. This it's like this art slash word processor called KidPix. Do you remember this? No, huh? All right, so KidPix, you remember KidPix? So, <laughs> so, so KidPix was this program where you could like make art and it also had like a, a text box. And so what I would do is I would put like my favorite sports teams on these strips of computer paper. It wasn't like laminated or anything. It was just like Mavericks, Spurs, Bulls, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then I would take them back to my classmates and I would, I would sell them to my classmates for like a dime. Except for the Bulls were a quarter because this they was- They were the Bulls. This is uh, like peak Jordan era. That was like right? MJ, that's okay? right, that's right. So, um, and I, I don't know where I got it to in my head to do that, but I remember being really, really, um, just really jazzed about this idea that I could create something and then find a market for it and people would give me a little bit of change for it, right? And so um, fast forward to, to, to high school, um, this is like early 2000s, this is like peak uh, 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 Napster, um, LimeWire days, and so I was burning CDs. <laughs> I was pirating. I was pirating <laughs> music. <laughs> and, Weren't we all? Right. Yeah. And I would, you know, make these CDs and go take them to my classmates and and sell them. And I loved that I could get five dollars <laughs> uh, for uh, these these CDs. I mean, I'm when I'm talking. When I tell you, like, I probably owed Ja Rule and Nelly in like Kid Rock, I probably owe them a couple hundred bucks there a piece, so. Hopefully they won't be listening. Please don't, please don't come back to me. But <laughs> that, was, that was like my uh, beginning to entrepreneurship. So, so tell me about your inspiration to start the Fort Worth Barbershop because you're not a barber, nope. you, you don't cut hair, nope. but you own a barbershop. Yeah. Tell me about how that got started. Uh, I mean, quite frankly, it was very similar, right? Uh, to those, those bookmark dates. I was, you know, I had I had moved to Fort Worth. My family's from Fort Worth. My parents, grandparents, all grew up in Fort Worth. Um, but I moved back here in 2012. My wife and I got married, and when I moved here, um, I was looking for a barbershop, and I was asking my friends uh, and family in Fort Worth, you know, where do you go to get your haircut in Fort Worth, and what I was getting back, what I was hearing back, was just 
apathy. Like nobody felt any particular way about the barbershop they went to or the barber they went to. And everybody was just kind of like, oh, well, you know, I go to this place, but, you know, I don't love it. Or I used to go to this place, but I can't really find I was just doing this kind of market research, number one, because I was trying to find a barbershop that I wanted to go to. Meanwhile, um, you know, I was online obsessively and seeing that all over the, literally all over the world, from East Coast to West Coast to UK and Amsterdam, there was this resurgence of the barber culture, right? Obviously, barbering is this old school trade that's been around for literally you know, thousands of years. And um, it was like coming back. And, you know, I'm sitting here in Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm thinking to myself, the city is growing. Now, this is this is like 2013-ish, right? So I think at that point we were maybe around 20th in population, you know, 800-something thousand, and quietly creeping up the ranks. And so I'm kind of looking around. I'm like, man, like there's a lot of people in this city. I, I can't be the only person looking for... Um, a barbershop uh, that's different than what currently kind of exists in this market. Meanwhile, looking at the trend of what's happening all over the world, like something's coming, right? So um, I thought to myself, like, this is a really good time to strike and create something um, a little bit different to um, a market of people who are... Um, I believe looking for something. And in that time, also, like I was working, my full-time job was as a digital marketer. Um, I was working for um, a small ad agency in Dallas. And so my day job was helping these brands position themselves online to, you know, whoever their, their, their target markets were, right? And so I felt like if I could take kind of what I was doing on my day-to-day -day job and apply, you know, this, Kind of digital backbone to um, this old school train. I thought that there was be a, there there would be a lot of opportunity. And, and to me, you know, a barbershop represents um, community, and I feel like it can really be um, um, a place where people come together, where the communities um, uh, communities grow and learn about themselves and each other. And so, I wanted to I wanted to be a part of the fabric of what it was very evident Fort Worth was starting to really become in a, in a new and fresh way. Well, it's such a great space too that I, that I love because it just, it feels homey. It's a place you want to hang out. It's super centrally located right at uh, what, Vickery Montgomery there. Oh. And, uh, and I can tell your, you know, your Napster stealing songs uh. <laughs> paid off because the music is always fantastic. So I pay for music now. There you go. All right. <laughs> but, but tell us kind of what that vibe is. Like when I, when I walk in to get my haircut, what am I going to see um, and feel and think? I want you to walk into a forward barbershop and feel like you have found a place that recognizes who you are as an individual and the things that make you unique. Um, and it is a central place for uh, a culmination of different people from all walks of life, um, all different backgrounds to have a shared experience that um, is thoughtful and, 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 and welcoming and well-designed um, with um, the shared experience with other people in Fort Worth. Um, who are either live here and work here, or maybe someone is traveling through. And I want for, you know, ultimately like this place, for the barbershop to be this place where you see um, people, um, cultures colliding, right? And what I mean by that is, I, I think that to create um, environments that are particularly inclusive, particularly diverse, um, in, in Fort Worth, at least, um, it takes being really intentional about that and, and, and setting out to, um, to do that. And I think inviting people in uh, or winking at people to let them know that, like, hey, this place is for you. Um, if no other place, they remember to call you by name, um, 
make sure you're comfortable, make sure you know that you can um, be your true authentic self. We want to we want to help foster that in, in the barbershop. And I think that the barbershop is just a great backdrop for that. Everybody that walks through the door doesn't necessarily believe the same things that we believe or come from the same background we, we come from, but you know, we, we're a place where um, you can, um, you're, you're gonna be treated with dignity and respect no matter who you are. All we ask is for just a little bit of that in return. And we think that we can be, by doing so, uh, we can fill an important um, space in the, in the ecosystem of Fort Worth entrepreneurship and small business. There you go. So your an outgrowth of the Fort Worth Barbershop was the Lathery. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the Lathery, how that got started, yeah. and then what happened to it. Yeah, so the Lathery was this idea that I had. So uh, back in, I guess it was 2016-ish, 17-ish, um, the barbershop was going and blowing, and we're at full capacity. And I'm like, every day people are like, are you going to expand? Are you going to open up another location? And like at that time, like I didn't really want to, <laughs> like I didn't really desire to open up, just take, you know, the forward barbershop model and do it again. And instead, one of the things I've been thinking a lot about is um, soap and soap stores. Uh, my wife and I had been in uh, Portland visiting one summer. I came into this Liberty store um, and the whole focus was on like soap products, like specialty soap products, um, shaving products, beard products, um, things that you find in your bathroom, you know what I mean? And so I was like, man, I love that. In Fort Worth, if I wanted to find like a specialty soap, where would I go? And I started asking people like, what do you, like what soap do you use, what do you buy? And I just, I just I'm just a shower person, like I love, a great shower and great shower products. <laughs> I really do. I really do. And I was like, man, I want to have that. I want that to be here. I want it to be like a little small footprint. Um, but I also um, have this kind of, we're not, I don't want to say busting at the seams, but we have, um, we have capacity. We don't have capacity at Fort Worth Barbershop. What if we expand it? So what if I took this idea of this soap store, uh, these things that, things that lather, um, and combine that with a smaller version of Fort Worth Barbershop so that we could catch some of the business that we were essentially turning away at Fort Worth Barbershop, put two barber chairs into the lathering hmm. and create this experience where essentially people can come and get their haircut and beard trim or a shave, but also um, have this emphasis on the product side of things, right? Um, and essentially you use the, 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 the service side of the business that we knew we, we, we had demand for them and use that to educate clients a little bit deeper on the product side of things, things to enhance your life and your grooming regimen. And so um, 20, spring 2017, we opened up. Um, things went really well. The, you know, it, we stayed booked and, and busy. Um, come 2019, so like fall of 2019, had some staff, uh, no, our staff was staff was intact. Um, had a manager there, was leaving. My lease was about to come up at the Lathery. And when my lease was about to come up over at Fort Worth Barbershop, I had a couple of chairs available. And at the same time, I was about to like really dive deep into developing this hotel. And so, I made the decision to um, essentially consolidate what we were doing at the Lathery, move my staff and our inventory over to Fort Worth Barbershop and shutter the store. But I wanted to, but I, but I still love the concept. I love the idea. And quite frankly, I think that I would do some things differently um, with that business model. Um, and if nothing else, it was a great beta test to see how to make that mix of service and retail work. So you start a barbershop, mm -hmm. you start a soap shop, mm -hmm. the next logical step is to open a hotel. <laughs> so tell me about how Hotel Dreis came to be and what your vision for it is. Sure, sure. So um, Hotel Dreis, wow. So when, 
I travel. I, number one, I love a good hotel lobby. I love having drinks in a hotel lobby. I love either, you know, whether it be hanging out with whoever I'm traveling with or um, meeting people in other cities. I love getting a sense of what a city is um, through spaces that authentically tell a story of of where I am, right? Like I want to be, I want to be where the locals want to be. You know what I mean? And so, um, when I would travel to these different cities, um, that's what I would seek out in terms of you know where to stay. Um, I want to, I would look for these small independent hotels that have um, you know some 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 identity to them outside of kind of the cookie cutter, excuse me, kind of cookie cutter big box. Um, hotels, and um, in, in much the same way that you know, I looked around Fort Worth and said, "Man, like there's gotta be a barbershop that I'd want to go to." I didn't find it. Um, I thought about the hotel space in, in the same way. I, when I would be in other cities, I felt like almost like envious, like, "Man, like why can't we have this?" Because when other people come to Fort Worth that don't know anything about the city or or haven't been here in years. Like, I want them to be able to see it through the lens that, that I do, which um, is an incredible place that is, I think, um, growing, don't think, I know it's growing, but is absolutely um, getting better and, and, and better. And so, quite frankly, uh, I want to create the hotel that I would want to stay in if I was traveling to Fort Worth. And so um, I, I knew that I wanted to do um, something small. Um, and back in the summer of uh, 2018, um, I was at Shipping Receiving Bar and uh, I ran into um, a friend of mine, uh, Alan Maderos. And Alan was like, yo, what's going on? I said, hey, we've got the barbershop, we've got the lathering at the time. Things are going well, but I'm ready to like, I'm kind of itching to do something different, something new. And so Alan was like, well, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do? And I was like, man, I've always wanted to do a small hotel. And Alan had just gotten back from staying at a, uh, at a boutique hotel like that weekend before. And he was like, man, I just got back from this place. It was so dope. We, we should talk about like what that could look like in Fort Worth. And so, um, he and I uh, met like that next week and just basically sat down going back and forth about why we needed this in Fort Worth and why it was so blaringly obvious that you know, what exists in so many other places just isn't here in Fort Worth yet, Fort Worth yet. particularly um, independently on um, Small or uh, boutique, as a lot of people <laughs> say, you know, um, sub thirty room hotel, and so he and I um, started looking for inventory, <clears throat> and um, I came across this old dry ice factory that had just hit the market um, in the cultural district, right across from what was soon to be completed Dickey's Arena, and so I'm driving by and I'm looking at this this structure, and I'm just like. All right, so there's this arena right here, and obviously this is pre-pandemic also, right? Right, right, right? So there's this arena right here, and they gotta fill this thing up with you know, 14,000 seats on a pretty regular basis. That's gonna be bring people from all over. Where are they gonna stay? Do we have hotels for them? Do we have Airbnbs? Yeah. Um, but as it exists today, if I was one of these people coming to fill up this arena, I don't see anything that speaks to me. I don't see anything that that um, that mirrors the the version of Fort Worth that that I experience. And so I said, man, like I think this is the property. So we had to, you know, we we so we we went on a property. We went on the on the real estate together. And whenever we um, we purchased it at the time, we st we still had to. It was not zoned for. For hospitality, right? Uh, because of the prox approximation to residential, so um, and so closing property in 2018, 2019, um, we 
petition to city council to have it rezoned and um, the community really showed up and supported us to say, hey, we see these entrepreneurs want to do something different that we don't see in the city. And the uh, um, city council supported us and so we got the we got rezoned and started working with uh, 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 Bennett, Bennett Partners, an architecture firm here, to develop what that looks like. And we wanted to marry this old design, this old this old ice warehouse, um, and, 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 and take components of the existing building um, that was bu it's built in like 69, 70, I think it was, the building was built. Um, and we wanted to marry that um, structure with a new, modern portion of the building. And that was something that was very intentional to really represent, um, <clears throat> you know, winking at the, the past of, of, of what Fort Worth and what the city has been, but also um, also very much looking towards the future of, of what we're becoming. And um, that's where um, kind of Hotel Dry Ice, the old Dry Ice, but so it's um, <clears throat> the idea of Dry Ice put together <laughs> is uh, Dry Ice. So that's where the, the name comes from and that's kind of how we got Got going, and so now we are very much in the throes of construction. Um, hope to be complete um, um, this summer, uh, very very soon, um, and start um, opening opening up this hotel to the world to tell them a little bit about who we are as a city. That's great, so cool. Why well, we drive by it every day and love seeing <laughs> the construction coming along. So glad to hear it's uh, it's moving forward. Um, so you know, just to continue the evolution, somewhere along the way, you decided. Let's host a TV show, uh, so, which know, was the next, you know, the next logical <laughs> progression, right? So, so give me the story on how Self Employed came about and how you ended up on Magnolia Network with Chip and JoJo and the yeah, whole thing. Yeah. So, um, now that one was not really in the plans. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I never anticipated uh, uh, television or being being on television. But um, so my my good friend uh, Red Sanders reached out to me back in uh, two years ago. So this was like 2019 um, and said, hey, you know, we're, we're meeting with the folks um, from Magnolia, Waco, they're starting this network. Um, would you be interested in like possibly doing a show? And so um, from that time, the idea of like kind of what the show was gonna be and what it was gonna be about kind of evolved, but what it ended up landing on um, really um, inspired me, which was um, Jonathan travels around the country and meets other entrepreneurs and learns about um, how they how they got started, kind of where they are currently as entrepreneurs, um, and where they're looking to to go with their businesses. And for me, like I I I love the idea of the concept because number one, it's just what I enjoy doing. I love talking to other entrepreneurs and. Uh, learning about you know what are the things that um, inspire them or what are the things that have you know gotten them to the place where they're at and so we're able to we're we've been able to like meet people from all different industries all different um, walks of life um, and people who have in different st st phases of entrepreneur entrepreneurship and so essentially I get to spend a day with them in their world and learning ab about them and that, it's been it's been incredible it's been really really fun experience to be um on in 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 front of a camera but like amplifying these conversations that i would want to have with these people even if there wasn't a camera there you know so i hope that from the show um i hope that people are inspired to um, pursue maybe dreams of entrepreneurship that have been on the back burner. Um, I think that there'll be people that quit their jobs and leap into entrepreneurship after watching some of these stories. So we just wrapped, we just wrapped the shooting the first season um, last week. And so um, July 15th, um, the Magnolia Network officially launches on digital. Um, um, the Magnolia app, and then also on Discovery Plus. And then in July of 2022, the cable network will launch. Um, and so what was the DIY network will become Magnolia network. And so um, 
it's been it's been cool. It's been real cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I got to know, and I know our listeners are going to want to know, what's it like been working with Chip and JoJo? Uh, Chip and JoJo, they've been super supportive, very um, also inspiring. And, you know, for them, this is a brand new venture. You know, they've um, done some incredible things um, in the past, but a TV network for them is a, is, a, is a brand new thing. And so it's been fun to just be on the ride Um as something is, is is starting, and I'm very much just kind of looking around, like watching, you know, how they're moving and, and the things that they're um, jumping into um, without without fear or trepidation, and so um, incredibly inspiring, super kind people. That I mean, obviously, you, you watch them on TV, and you're like, okay, these this is how these people were. Like, they're really just really sweet, really kind. Uh, so they're people. really like that, huh? They're, t- All they're, right. they're really like that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so they've been, they've, been great. they've been great. That's awesome. Well, congrats to you. We're excited to, to see the show. Have, has an episode come out yet? So, yes, the pilot episode is now streaming right now okay. on Discovery Plus. Okay, very um, good. So if you go to Discovery Plus, uh, underneath the Magnolia Network preview, um, you can see my show, Self-Employed, uh, the first episode that we shot um, as well as um, a host of other shows that will be uh, on the network as well. That's super cool. Well, and I know in the preview, we've seen some other folks we've had on this podcast, like Carrie Crow yeah. from Melt Ice Cream, and of course, some of our favorites, like Taco Heads, yeah. others <laughs> I think are going to be featured, which is super exciting. So. Well, if you stay tuned, you'll, 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 All right, we'll, we're we'll see. see. We're going to see a little, we're gonna see a little, bit, of, a little bit of Fort Worth throughout, throughout the season. <clears throat> That's awesome. So what do you think make, makes Fort Worth special and makes Fort Worth a great place for entrepreneurs and innovators? You know, I think that Fort Worth is very much right now the Wild West in a lot of ways, right? And what I mean by that is that there's still opportunities specifically um, with in the small business world, right? Um, what I believe is particularly unique about Fort Worth is that what we don't struggle with at all compared to a lot of cities is population. Yeah. Right? So in terms of volume of potential customer base, we've got the people, right? But we still need some of the things, right? We still have spaces that I think have a lot of room for growth, and I think that we are a uh, we are a, a, a city that uniquely still has that small town feel. People always say, you know, small town, big city. I know it's super like super cliche, but at the same time, I think it it it, it, it it's true. Yeah, it represents opportunity, right? So like, yeah, I mean, right. even you know, thinking about my barbershop, right? We're a city creeping towards a million people, right? What's happening, I think, and you're starting to see more and more um, throughout Fort Worth is you have an idea, you have a concept, particularly thinking about a brick and mortar, small business, something like that, right? What we don't have to do is create things that are necessarily for everybody, right? Fort Worth Barbershop, for a percentage of people, it's going to be a perfect fit. Great for them, right? But guess what? Like, there's room for the next barbershop, right? And there's room for the next taco shop. And there's room for um, the next uh, 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 apparel store. Like There is still space and we've got the people to support and we have, I think, a, u- a uniquely supportive community that wants to champion um, small business and wants to champion small business and wants to champion um, new ideas um, to Fort Worth. Um, though we have a lot of room to grow in a lot of um, areas that I think that Fort Worth is behind and can um, grow in, um, I think now's a really good time. And quite frankly, I don't know that the iron will always be as hot as it is right now. Um, as, you know, it's a whole other conversation, but like, cost of living continues to go up. I mean, there'll be people that will just, you won't be able to do things in Fort Worth or some of those spaces will have been filled. But as of right now, I still think that there's a lot of upside uh, to being in Fort Worth in this moment, particularly in the, in the, in the entrepreneurial 
space. We're bullish on Fort Worth too, so I love bullish. it. Bullish, bullish, bullish. <laughs> so, Jonathan, who is your favorite innovator in Fort Worth? You know, I think the innovator, the inno, the, the inno, I think that the most innovative person in Fort Worth right now um, is someone who is sitting, watching, learning. They might be 16 years old right now, um, but they're seeing the landscape of what the future of Fort Worth looks like. I don't, I don't know what their name is. I don't know what they're doing or, or what they have plans to do, but I think that um, the future of the city is, is the youth, <laughs> people younger than you and I, who are, are going to um, grab the city by the horns. And I think that a lot of the, the entrepreneurs and the people who are um, creating in this, in this city are being watched, right? Yeah. And I think that that, that innovator is, is behind us. And I think that there's gonna be a lot of them um, that push the city forward. It's gonna be those innovators who are, who are learning, growing. They might be selling bookmarks right now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's what I'm excited about. That's great. Yeah, what a, and what a, great, what a great way to end this episode because I think it, it does show that there's such a great future coming in Fort Worth. We're a young city, it's growing like crazy. People are moving here all the time yep. and, uh, and the future is bright. So I, I completely agree with you on that. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining me today on Innovate Fort Worth. If you want to learn more about the one and only Jonathan Morris, uh, first off, check out his barbershop at fortworthbarbershop.com. Uh, also be sure to tune into his TV show, Self-Employed on the Magnolia Network and Discovery Plus. And Hotel Dreis will be opening sometime this summer. Soon, soon, very soon. <laughs> uh, if you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to Innovate Fort Worth and uh, please leave us a review. It really does help. Want to join the conversation? Follow us on social media at, at HSC Innovates and be sure to check out our brand new YouTube channel where you can find this episode and all the others uh, just by searching for Innovate Fort Worth. Mark your calendars now for Global Entrepreneurship Week Fort Worth 2021, which will run November 8th through the 14th. Last year, GEW Fort Worth was the number one GEW celebration in the United States. And this year, it'll be even bigger and better. To find out more, to sponsor, or to sign up to participate, visit gewfortworth.com and plan to join us on November 8th through the 14th. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers and Alex Branch. Our technical producer is Rob Upchurch, and our digital editors are Matt Hovlick and Summerlee Sherlock. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by UNT Health Science Center, where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork. <laughs>